YouTube. Welcome back to Spark Starter Channel. I have a unique and interesting story for you today called uh, Free Energy City. So yes, this is a story of a city that was once powered by free energy. This is the city of East Liverpool, Ohio, and it is a cautionary tale in sustainability. So I hope you enjoy it. Most of the inspiration for today's story, um, Free Energy City, was taken from the book uh, History of Columbiana County and Representative Citizens by William B. McCord. So this was written in 1905 about the preceding 100 years of history in Columbiana County, of which East Liverpool is a city within this county. And this particular county was really at the epicenter uh, of the Industrial Revolution and a lot of the um, first part of this presentation was inspired by McCord's chapter 10, The Earth's Hidden Treasures, Salt, Coal, Oil, and Gas. And that'll take us from 1800 up to 1900. And then I'll fill in some deals, uh, details about what happened in the later, um, in the 20th century. So the best place to start our story of the free energy city is in the beginning. And in this story, it's actually the point of beginning. At this point of beginning, there's placed a marker. This marker designates the Ohio Pennsylvania state line border, and it was the beginning of the Northwest Territory of the United States. This is where the famous Lewis and Clark expedition began. Lewis and Clark, before embarking on the journey, stopped in the small city of Georgetown to buy some supplies in a canoe, which, which began their journey down the Ohio and on uh, to the rest of the United States. A few years after Lewis and Clark had departed uh, the area of the point of beginning, a few miles away, a town called Salineville was started. This town uh, produced a very valuable commodity for its day. This was salt water. Now, at the time, this very briny salt water solution, saline, was invaluable in preserving foods. Salt well drillers were able to, uh, to extract salt from the wells of Salineville, and it created uh, a very valuable commodity that, that drove the creation of the town and began to spur economic activity in this region. The salt of Salineville was produced during the Silurian period, where ancient lagoons had dried up and left salt deposits. The first wells were drilled in, in the early 1800s, but peaked in 1835, with the numerous wells in the region producing up to 50 barrels of salt brine per week. As the output peaked and declined, salt wellers um, were able to harness the natural gas that was initially unwanted and sometimes caused fires and injuries. Um, this gas was harnessed and then burnt to take the low quality salt brine that was more water than salt and boil it down to a more valuable brine. This is the first example of natural gas coming from a well and being used as an energy source. Sadly, not long after the Saleneville wells peaked in their production and began to decline, the uh, Civil War punctuated the salt industry in Salineville and uh, ended in the, the lesser known Battle of Salineville where Morgan's Raiders, the, the Confederate States of America, came and raided the, um, the town of Salineville um, as Morgan tried to move northward and find passage across the river and escape back to the southern states. He was captured by a militia from Steubenville just outside Salineville in the city of West Point. Although the salt wells of Salineville had been tapped out and the age of salt was ending, a new age was about to be born. A hundred miles away from the point of beginning, 
the, in the city of Titusville, a well was drilled that would change the course of human history. Now, nothing was new about well drilling, and there's even nothing new about using oil. It had been used in lamps uh, since early, early times. Uh, however, oil was always difficult to obtain. It would slowly seep from the rocks, and it would be collected in blankets or other means, and small lampfuls of oil or jars full of oil could be attained at a time. Drilling wells for water was not a new concept. People needed water, and a well was a very efficient way to have a reliable supply. But what changed? But what was different about the Titusville well? It was the first time people had drilled for oil. The oil well was innovative because it could produce many, many gallons of oil, barrels of oil, quickly. This was energy on tap for the early settlers of America. This oil discovery inspired in the public consciousness the idea that you could drill wells to obtain energy, just have, as the salt wellers had done inadvertently when finding gas while drilling their salt wells. This discovery of oil in western Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio, and throughout Appalachia formed the great wealth of J.D. Rockefeller and the Standard Oil Company. And the economic power generated by this energy resource, both oil and natural gas, allowed the strong economies of the frontier of America and the Midwest to have influence over the national stage. Even a presidential candidate, William McKinley, was produced from this region. Born just outside of East Liverpool, not far from the point of beginning, near Lisbon, Ohio, he would bring Midwest influence across the United States, and his assassination would punctuate the age of gas. The age of natural gas was the primary driver for the productivity of East Liverpool. The city of East Liverpool was one of the first cities to use gas natural gas from its wells to power light and heat in homes and businesses. The lights were never extinguished in East Liverpool. The, the natural gas that came from the shallow wells um, seemed uh, almost endless, and they used, uh, they used it 24 hours a day, never turning the street lights off. This free energy uh, that came from the natural gas wells of East Liverpool was used in the potteries to make um, beautiful pottery that would otherwise be expensive but with other energy sources. Now I'm going to share with you an entry from Encyclopedia Britannica of 1879. This is the entry for East Liverpool. The city of East Liverpool, Ohio is entirely illuminated and to a large extent heated by gas wells which exist in and around this town. The light is of extraordinary brilliancy and is so abundant and free that the street lamps are never extinguished, and much of the manufacturing and steam power of the town, which embraces 22 potteries, giving employment to 2,000 hands, is derived from the gas. The first well, 450 foot deep, was opened in 1859, and up to present year, 1879, neither it nor any of those tapped at later dates show any sign of failing. However, the, well, the wells did fail, and not long after that Encyclopedia Britannica entry was made. As the gas wells failed, pipelines were brought in from farther and farther away. Some of the old gas lines can still be seen across the river from East Liverpool, and they form pylons for the marina. I'll now read you an excerpt from McCord's book, written in 1905, about the gas wells of East Liverpool. From McCord. The gas wells at East Liverpool lasted for over 10 years. Then gas in great quantities was struck in the Miller Field, two miles east of Fairview, West Virginia, seven miles from East Liverpool, and the Ohio Valley Gas Company was 
organized by Pittsburgh Capital to pipe the product to East Liverpool. An 8-inch main was run from the West Virginia field, crossing the river at East Liverpool. And that day there was no means of controlling the pressure at the wells, and a great standpipe was erected opposite the foot of Broadway and on the West Virginia side of the river to reduce the pressure in the pipes. For two years, the surplus gas roared through the standpipe, giving forth a flame 50 feet high. Enough gas was wasted at this pipe to supply the entire community for a year. During that period, there was other escape pipes in East Liverpool, and the gas lamps in the streets burned day and night. The supply was thought to be inexhaustible, and the waste of the fuel was immense. Families were supplied with lights and fuel for from $12 to $36 a year, and, and no means of measuring the amount of gas was used. So this was essentially free energy. The um, you for a, a basic fee from twelve to thirty six dollars per year, you could have a a pipeline that would give you as much gas as you could ever consume. And this lasted for a, the period of the eighteen sixties and was over by nineteen hundred. And it drove the the industries of East Liverpool. These are a few pictures of East Liverpool from about the time when the gas wells were powering the industries. We had numerous shops, theaters, some of the best theaters between New York and Chicago, trolley lines, bustling streets, numerous bottle kilns that heated the pottery and produced more than 50% of all pottery sold in the United States at that time. This is a timeline of the age of gas that ran from about 1860 to 1900. You see in the 1850s, the first gas was used to boil the salt brine from the, salt, the age of salt. Uh, in 1859, Drake drilled the first well in Titusville, producing oil. Many other um, well attempts to find oil were made in East Liverpool with most producing natural gas. Well production of East Liverpool began in the, the same year, 1859, and lasted 30 years. In the early to mid 1880s, the local um, uh, supplies began to fail and the lines were run outside of East Liverpool. And in the 1890s, the gas supply began to fail in a major way, with gas lines being um, no longer viable. By 1900, the age of natural gas, the near free energy source, was coming to an end. And similarly, as the age of salt had been punctuated by the Battle of Selineville, the age of gas was about to be punctuated by the assassination of President McKinley. In 1901, McKinley was assassinated. McKinley, a president that represented the new industrial wealth of the Appalachian frontier, had faced a number of problems that are similar to those in 2020. Failing factories, collapsing infrastructure, runs on the bank, and concerns about America's influence in Latin America were all problems uh, that McKinley was facing. With his assassination, Theodore Roosevelt would be appointed as president. Roosevelt, an East Coast aristocrat, would move most of the power and influence back to the New York-Washington corridor and leaving Appalachia less influential. In this campaign advertisement from 1900, you can see a sign of the new age to come. As energy was desperately needed and the natural gas wells were running dry, coal was about to become the new source of industrial energy. And you can see in the, the campaign advertisement of McKinley, 
coal power trains, boats, and factories. And the age of coal was about to begin. Hey YouTube, hope you're enjoying Free Energy City. I'm here across the river from East Liverpool, um, across from the Broadway Wharf, where the uh, former site of the gas escape pipe that produced a 50-foot flame burned continuously day and night. This is all that's left of the pipe, uh, the gas pipeline. It's been repurposed for pylons for um, boats. And you can see in the distance East Liverpool uh, in the background and the Broadway Wharf. So um, I'm splitting this video up into two parts. Hope you enjoyed part one. We still have another part to go. So thanks for watching and uh, yeah, see you in the next broadcast.